back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Sig Sauer Tango 4. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Sig Sauer Tango 4 6 24 by 50 Now, this optic has pretty much all the features you're going to be looking for if you're looking to get an optic for PRS or long-range shooting. So this optic retails around $770 or, or around $880. So that's what you should expect to pay uh, when you're looking to buy this optic. If you are looking to buy one, check out the links in the descriptions below. I'll leave a few of them there for you. So what does this optic have that you're going to be looking for? Well, it has a 50 millimeter objective, 30 millimeter tube, uh, really positive and audible turrets. It's got a zero stop wide magnification range, a throw lever, and illumination. So a lot of these features you are gonna be looking for if you're gonna be getting into PRS. So let's start this review off with the glass quality. This is at six magnification. And this is at 24 magnification. glass quality, we are going to give it a 5 out of 5. In my opinion, this glass is exactly where it should be, and it's really, really good. In the footage you're going to see fairly, fairly shortly, I was shooting at, I think, 820 meters, and when it was really, really bright, obviously with the Mirage, I couldn't tell quite as well on my giant steel gong, but once the Mirage, once the clouds kind of came over, I could really tell every hit on the steel gong. So next, we have the eye relief. So with the highest magnification, we have an advertised rate of, we have an advertised distance of 3.3 inches, which is a bit on the modest side. Now at the lowest magnification, it's definitely something more like four. So, I mean, it's definitely higher than, than what it's advertising there. Uh, in addition, the eye box is fairly good, but definitely not the best that I've seen at this price. And the fast focus eyepiece is super smooth, like really nice, and there is no slop whatsoever. And I mean, that's what you should expect at this price. This should be perfection. There shouldn't be any slop in anything. So for the eye relief, we are gonna give it a four out of five for the reason that there's only 3.3 inches of eye relief at the highest magnification, and the eye box is moderately tight. Next, we have the focus parallax. Well, if you look here, we have our focus parallax dial. It's fairly small, and I'm not talking about this part. This is the illumination. This is your focus parallax dial, and if you see it, it's pretty small. I mean, it does have some really nice and really sharp knurling to really kind of help mitigate that, but still, it's really on the small side. And if you're kind of in a PRS competition, you might miss it or you might just slip. So ideally it should be bigger. Another thing is it is very smooth and there is no slop whatsoever in, in, in the dial. And the numbers do match the distance indicated pretty much perfectly. So you really want to be disappointed with that. So for the reason that it is a little bit small, we are gonna be giving it a four out of five for that. Next we have recoil. This is where we get to start having some fun. Let's get to the range. All right, so 23, well, 24 technically, MOA up. And 1.1 to 1 1.4 MOA right. All right, so this is at 650 meters. I mean, in my opinion, the glass looks very nice and very sharp. I don't think we hit, but it sounded a bit like it.
Woo. We hit it again. Woo -hoo. <laughs> I'm running out of bullets though. And I have no more Hornadies and my load's going to be a little bit off if I use anything else. Man, but I can't believe we actually hit our target with <laughs> with my 308. Usually it doesn't do so good. Nope. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I love, I love shooting. Oh my God, this is so much fun. Right, guys that was awesome I mean like really a ton of fun um, this is actually my first time bringing my 308 out to 820 meters I mean uh, I, I'm really surprised with myself I mean I really wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for well good glass quality obviously good turrets and such but obviously two products that if you don't already have you're likely gonna want to get some before you go to do some really long-range shooting for example at 820 meters a Kestrel is a massive advantage when uh, when trying to like gauge the wind. Personally, I'm useless in the wind. Before I had these instruments, if it was more than 10 kilometers an hour wind, I wouldn't even go out. Now if it's 25, I'm like, eh, so what? I got my Kestrel, no problem. And also with the uh, rangefinder, they communicate together. So you really don't have to like figure anything out. You just pair them both together, gauge the wind, gauge the distance, and you're done. It's really awesome. Anyway, if you're looking to pick those up, check out the links in the descriptions below. I'll leave a few there for you. And next, let's get to the turrets. Now, this is really the steak and potatoes of any optic. Because without turrets, I mean, you got a telescope. So these turrets have 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. So that's pretty darn modest when it comes to optics in this price range. I mean, you can definitely make do. I mean, I was shooting up to 820 meters, no problem. And I think I was only dialing about 34, 35 MOA. If you have a 20 MOA rail on your optic, you can stretch that out probably to about a thousand. I mean, in my situation, I was, I did have it on a 20 mm rail. So yes, I could have gone to a thousand. So for a PRS rifle scope, yes, this will do just fine. For an extreme long range shooter, mm, you might want something with more internal adjustment. So let's get down to it. Um, this optic does have a zero stop, which I mean at this price point, it damn well better. And the good thing about this zero stop is it doesn't limit the amount of internal adjustment once you set the zero stop. So in a lot of optics, well, when you put the zero stop in, you have one turn, which is like, oh, okay. So now I only have either, you know, 25 MOA, which is like, what? That wouldn't even get me to 800. So uh, this one, I mean, if, if obviously your base is as low as it could be with, with the amount of internal adjustment, you could literally, if you had a 25 MOA rail, have a 5 MOA down and then have a full 55 MOA of turret usage, which is fantastic. I mean, that's really going to get you pretty darn far. And on the windage, it only has a 30 MOA. So I'm only speaking about the uh, MOA version. I think the, the mils has 8.5 mils on the windage and the elevation has 17 mils of adjustment on the mil version. Now on the turret also itself, it has 25 MOA per rotation. Now that's really good. You want a lot of adjustment per rotation, especially if you're doing PRS. If you're just bench rest shooting and you're not really in a hurry or anything, it doesn't matter quite so much, but this is really nice. Anyway, let's get outside. Let's uh, test these turrets. We're going to do a box test, validate the amount of internal adjustment, see if there's any point of impact change with magnification, and test out the tracking. Let's start with the box test. Let's go 10 MOA out. Perfect. Perfect. Back down. And back to center. Perfect. Now let's validate the tracking. All right, let's go 10 MOA down. Perfect. Let's go 20. Perfect. Let's go 30. Perfect. Let's go 40.
perfect. And let's go 50. And let's get that clear. Very nice, spot on. All right, all right, let's go all the way to the top. And that's all she goes. And back down. And that's it. All right, let's see how much wind adjustment it has. And that's it. And that's it. Let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. Perfect. You want to loosen the three set screws. Now let, this is, let's say you've already zeroed your optic. So you're going to loosen the three set screws. You got one, two, and three. All right, so now you're going to, bring, you're going to lift it up just a little, bring it on the zero, and now you're going to tighten them. It's literally this simple. Tighten one, tighten two, and tighten the third one. All right, take a look at this. Works great. Really simple, it works quite nicely. All right, so for the box test, it did just fine. The tracking on this thing is like, phew. Perfect and really, really nice. It's really good. You won't be disappointed whatsoever. And as I mentioned earlier, you got 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment and you have uh, 30 MOA on the windage. So not a ton on the windage, but I mean, how often are you gonna be dialing 15 MOA left due to the wind? Not all that often. And for me, never. <laughs> so one thing I did notice when I initially got this optic is, oh my gosh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I, I, I thought the optic was defective. And now I'm not the only one, so I guess I'm not all that bad. I was looking at the Six Hour website and people were having trouble zeroing their optic, just like me. Uh, I was bore sighting it. Now I have my like, kind of target in my bore and I'm trying to bring up the reticle so it like goes up to that target. And I couldn't get, it was like about two feet down at about 100 meters. And I'm like, I don't get it. Why won't this turret go any further? Well, it's, it's fairly simple. What you're gonna wanna do to solve that problem is you remove the, uh, the turret cap, you're gonna wanna turn the turret post all the way clockwise until it stops, and then you can adjust it. It's just because with the cap installed all the way at the bottom, it prevents you from bringing the reticle any further upwards. So that's, it's just that, it's that simple. The same kind of theory applies for the windage turret too. So once you're re-zeroing your windage cap, don't push it all the way onto the, uh, the, scope, uh, the scope body or else you won't be able to adjust in that direction. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. So for the turrets, I do have to say this, these turrets are super positive. Now on a lot of optics at this price, they do have a little bit of wiggle. Now this one has none. If it's going to move, it's going to click which is great. That means there's not gonna be any play if you just like bring it slightly up without clicking it, which I've seen on optics at about $1,200. Now, this optic is pretty nice for that. So we are gonna give this optic a four out of five. The turrets are fantastic, but we remember we only have 60 MOA, which is a somewhat limiting factor. Just consider your caliber when you're choosing the optic and obviously consider the base when you're gonna be getting this optic. So a couple things to consider. Next, we have the reticle. Well, this reticle is pretty darn nice. They have the DEV-L and they have the milling reticle, both in MOA and in milliradians. Now, in my opinion, this reticle at the maximum magnification is the perfect thickness. I have no complaints whatsoever. I mean, I'm pretty picky when it comes to reticles, but this was really nice. Also, one thing to note is the reticle is illuminated. You have eight settings of illumination and two night vision settings. Now, the grading is really nice and you will be able to pick it out in daylight. And another really cool feature that it does in some other optics is they have a MOTAC feature, which I mean, I haven't seen on any optics other than SIGs. So let's say you leave your battery on because you're lazy and you don't check your stuff like myself, uh, and you just leave the optic set. After I think it's two hours, it'll just automatically time off. Now, when you pick it back up, it'll automatically come back on again, which is an awesome feature so you don't always have a dead battery every time you go with your rifle. So yeah, for the reticle, we are gonna give it a five out of five. They definitely have a nice selection and they really have a good design when it comes to the reticle.
So next is the warranty. Uh, SIG has a lifetime warranty on their optics, which is fantastic and which pretty much any optics company in this modern day age need to do if they want to make it. Now, the one thing that isn't lifetime warranty is their electronic components of, the, uh, of their optics. So it only has a five year warranty, which is something to consider. So for the warranty, we are gonna give it a four out of five. So what are my thoughts on this optic? Would I choose it if I were to go into PRS match? Well, there's a few things to consider when choosing an optic. For one, we haven't discussed is field of view, uh, which is an often overlooked portion of any optics review and something even I've overlooked to do in a lot of my reviews is in the 6 to 24 magnification range. So definitely the Tango 4 is a bit on the low side of the field of view. And that's definitely something I think you're going to want to consider when it comes to choosing an optic for a PRS type competition. Because, I mean, if you have a wider field of view, you'll be able to, you'll be able to obtain your targets a bit easier than if you have a slightly shorter field of view. Now, regardless of that, this is a very good option when it comes to uh, choosing an optic for PRS or long range shooting. The fit and finish on this optic is damn near perfection. There is no slop, no wiggle in anything on this optic. You definitely won't be disappointed. And I mean, if there was a beauty pageant for optics, I think SIG would take the cake. Anyway, if you are looking at picking one of these up or any of the things we showed you in this video today, check out the links in the descriptions below. Um, they do help the channel um, through, through affiliate links and they help this channel continue to be funded. And also, if you guys do enjoy the channel, you can consider joining our Facebook group, Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews, if you want to contribute, share your opinions. So anyway, thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.